Hi everybody! Welcome to class two of your Cooking Matters for Kids virtual series. So today we are going to be learning about measuring, using different measurement tools, and we'll be applying that by making banana pancakes at the end of the lesson. Let's review what we talked about last class. We talked about my plate and why it's so important to eat from all five food groups. We talked about vitamins and minerals, we talked about fiber and all the great things that are parts of the foods that we love. We also talked about knife safety, hand washing, and produce washing, three very important things to do when you're cooking. We then made a delicious, delicious salsa together, and I really hope some of you made that salsa, a similar salsa, or just made something with your family with your new skills. If you didn't, there's still time. So today, we are going to be talking about measuring spoons, measuring cups, and everyone's favorite thing, fractions. Well, why are we going to be talking about fractions, you ask? Well, because when you're in the kitchen, there's a lot of fractions around you. So you'll have to use the knowledge that you have about fractions already, and maybe even do some new learning and some new thinking. Is everybody ready? So let's check out our supplies. We have a liquid measuring cup, we have a set of dry measuring cups, and we have a set of measuring spoons. You'll notice the increments we have. We have a one cup, a half cup, a quarter cup, I'm gonna switch these, a third cup, and a quarter cup. A third cup is larger than a quarter cup. We have a one tablespoon, we have a one teaspoon, we have a one half teaspoon, and we have a one quarter teaspoon. As you can see, we might have to use some math if we don't have the correct tool. So let's check this out. That might be a little hard to see. So measuring cups that are for liquid are just what they are for. They're for liquid. Water, milk, oil, any type of liquid. Dry measuring cups are for flour, sugar, veggies, fruits, and other dry items. The measurement is pretty much the same, but here's one reason why we keep them separate. If I put a bunch of water in this cup and then I dip it in a bag of flour, what's going to happen to the cup? You're right, it gets covered in flour. That's one reason. The second reason is if I fill this all the way to the top with a liquid and I try to bring it over to my bowl, it's probably going to spill. When you use a liquid measuring cup, you can precisely measure up to the amount that you need and you can carry it with a handle and pour it in safely. Let's chat about measuring spoons. We have our tablespoon, teaspoon, half teaspoon, and quarter teaspoon, just as we have with my supplies. So here's what I need you to remember. The tablespoon is the biggest spoon available. You can remember that that is the biggest because a table is big. Here we have a teaspoon, much smaller than a tablespoon. You can remember that a teaspoon is smaller because a teacup is small. A table is big, a teacup is small. I'll give you a little extra information here. About three teaspoons is equivalent to a whole tablespoon. So if you ever don't have a tablespoon, you can use three teaspoons. Here we have a half teaspoon. So the half teaspoon is a fraction of this one teaspoon. It's exactly half. So how many half teaspoons would equal one teaspoon? You're right, two. Now we have a quarter teaspoon. How many quarter teaspoons equal a half teaspoon? You got it, two. How many quarter teaspoons would equal one whole teaspoon? You're right, four. All right, so sometimes you might need to do some math in the kitchen. Let's check over here just to make sure we understand. A tablespoon in recipes can be written in multiple different ways. It might actually say one tablespoon. Well, that's easy enough. It might say one capital T. Well, it's a capital T because the tablespoon is, you're right, bigger. You also might see an abbreviation, one TBSP, one tablespoon. Those are three ways you might see that in a recipe. Teaspoon, you might see written as one teaspoon. Again, that's easy. You might see one small T, lowercase t, obviously because a teaspoon is small. You also might see one TSP, one teaspoon. You might see any of those types of words or abbreviations or letters in your recipes, so you need to know 
what that means. Check out this fraction bar. This might help. Across the top in red, we have a whole. It breaks it down into half, thirds, quarters, and eighths. Those are typically the only measurements we use in cooking. You don't generally see twelfths or sixteenths or anything like that, but guess what? A sixteenth of a cup is actually a tablespoon. Sixteen tablespoons equals one cup. So you can actually use that piece of information to do some extra math in the kitchen. But if it calls for a cup of flour and you say, I'm going to really be creative here and use 16 tablespoons instead, there's a lot of room for error there. You will probably end up with the wrong amount because you might make a heaping tablespoon or you might not have enough. So it's much more accurate to use the largest tool available. But if for some reason you did not have any way of making a cup, you didn't have any of these tools, well, I guess maybe you'd have to try this. I don't know. So looking here, this can also help you. If you don't have a third cup, well, if you don't have a third cup, that's kind of tough. But if you look at a third compared to a fourth, we notice it's just a little more. So if you had to, you could always just do a little bit more than a quarter cup to get a third. But let's say you were looking for, hmm, a half cup and you didn't have a half cup. What's another way you could make a half cup? That's right, you could use two quarter cups, as you can see right here, or you could even use four eighth cups. I don't have an eighth cup here. An eighth cup would be about a half, or exactly half of a quarter cup. But again, I don't have an eighth cup. Interesting though, could anybody figure out how many tablespoons are in an eighth cup? Hmm. All right, let's make banana pancakes. As you can see, I have a blender, a liquid measuring cup. This is what a liquid measuring cup looks like. It's what we put water, milk, anything that is liquid in. I have our dry measuring cups. These are for things like flour and sugar and other dry ingredients. I have a bowl to crack our eggs into because I don't wanna crack our eggs directly into the blender in case I get shells in there. And I also have a set of measuring spoons. Before we start a recipe, always make sure you have all of the ingredients listed. So starting from the top of the recipe, I have almond milk. You can feel free to use regular milk. Any milk you have on hand is perfectly fine. I have my eggs. bananas, vanilla extract, baking powder, cinnamon, salt, and oats. Your oats might look a little different than this, but any oats will work. The beauty of this recipe is you're making it right in a blender, so your parents will be happy that there aren't many dishes. The first ingredient that my recipe calls for is almond milk, but remember you can use whatever milk you have. So the recipe calls for one cup of almond milk. Should I use my dry measuring cups or my liquid measuring cup? That's right, my liquid measuring cup. I actually want to double this recipe. So instead of one cup, what should I do? That's right, two cups. So I'll go ahead and pour two cups of almond milk into my measuring cup. I will pour that directly into the blender. When I poured, I went all the way up to this red line that said two cups. You can see two cups is equivalent to 16 ounces. That means one cup is equivalent to eight ounces. Next, my recipe calls for one egg, but if I'm doubling the recipe, how many eggs should I use? You got it, two. 
I cracked my eggs into a separate bowl. Remember I told you why? We wanna make sure we don't get any shells in our batter. If you do get a shell, whoops, looks like I did. Sometimes I actually use the larger shell to dig through and to get it out. Sometimes it's a little challenging. There we go. Uh-oh, what should I do to my hands now? That's right, let's go wash them. I'm back with clean hands. Why do you think that's so important to wash your hands after you crack eggs? You got it. The risk of foodborne illness and salmonella is higher if you don't wash your hands after touching raw eggs and raw meat. Now I'm going to take my eggs and I'm going to pour them in the blender. Next up is one banana. But again, if I'm doubling that recipe, I don't need one banana, I need two. I like to use bananas that are getting a little bit brown as a banana gets older and turns brown on the outside, it gets a lot sweeter. So since there's no sugar in this recipe, we want our pancakes to be nice and sweet. We're using the natural sugar from very ripe bananas. Here's your pop quiz. Which one is the teaspoon? Is it the biggest one? Is it the smallest one? Hmm. I think we know the biggest one is a tablespoon because I told you earlier that a table is big and that's how you can remember. The smallest one is a fraction of a teaspoon. So it won't be that one. This one happens to be a quarter of a teaspoon. So that means four of these would actually equal one teaspoon. This one over here is a half teaspoon. So two of these would equal one teaspoon. If you guess the third one in, you are correct. This is your one teaspoon. So this recipe calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract, but remember, we're doubling this recipe. So can anybody tell me what I should use? That's right, I need two teaspoons, but let's throw a little wrench in it. This one's dirty. We only have three to choose from. I need two teaspoons. What could I use? Ah, good thinking. I could use, hmm, a half teaspoon how many times though? You're right. I could use a half teaspoon four times. What about the quarter teaspoon? Could I use that? Sure. I could use the quarter teaspoon how many times? Eight times. Wow. That seems like a lot of work. I think that if I had a choice, I'd probably pick the half teaspoon so I'd have to pour less and make less of a mess. So let's go ahead and get two teaspoons of vanilla extract using a half teaspoon. So we'll need one, two, three, and four. Next up on our ingredients list is baking powder. Baking powder helps things rise so they're fluffier. This recipe calls for one teaspoon of baking powder. And I don't wanna make you use this eight times, so I'll let us have our teaspoon back. So if we're doubling our recipe, how many one teaspoon should we use? That's right, we should use two of them. If I had to use this, how many one quarter teaspoons would I have to use to get all the way to two teaspoons? You're right, eight. But if I scoop in here eight times, there's a chance I'm not going to be as accurate as I should be. So the larger the measurement that I can use, the better. So I'll use our one teaspoon and I will go ahead and scrape. There's this cool thing right inside the baking powder jar that you can scrape to make it perfectly even. I'll put one and I'll put two. Next up, we have one teaspoon of cinnamon. So we can use our teaspoon again. What I see a lot of kids do is I see kids open it up like this and they start shaking it like this and oh gosh, what's happening? I just made a huge mess. So when you can, take the whole top off and as long as this is clean, you can go ahead and scoop right in. If you had just used this teaspoon for something wet or something that you don't want to cross contaminate into the cinnamon, I wouldn't do this. But in the case where this was clean, you can go ahead 
and always kind of shake it sideways to make sure you're getting a nice flat, even amount of cinnamon. If you do too much like this, that's way too much cinnamon. Or if you get too little like this, you won't have enough. So go ahead and shake it to get a nice, even amount. The next ingredient on our list is salt. It calls for one eighth of a teaspoon salt. Hmm, well, that's interesting. It looks like I have a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a half teaspoon, and a quarter teaspoon. I don't know what to do. Do you have any ideas? Ah, good thinking. An eighth is half of a quarter. So I guess I would have to do about half of this small teaspoon, this one quarter teaspoon. That's a great idea. But remember, we are doubling our recipe. So does anybody know what one eighth plus one eighth is? Ah, we're back to one quarter again. Think back to the fraction bar I showed you in the lesson. So we actually need, since we're doubling our recipe, we need one quarter teaspoon of salt. So I do wanna tell you that in one day, you should not get more than one teaspoon of salt in your diet. Too much salt isn't that good for you. So if in this recipe, I'm using a quarter teaspoon, that's probably okay because this is going to make anywhere from 15 to 30 pancakes, depending on how big I make them. So that means you're only getting a small amount of salt per pancake. Sometimes salt is necessary to work in baked goods to help them rise as well. So we do wanna put a little bit in there, but you probably don't have to put the whole amount if you don't want to. These pancakes are for my son and he's only 10 months old. So I'm not going to put a full quarter teaspoon. I'm probably just going to put a dash. You can choose what you wanna do with your own family. The last ingredient for our pancakes is two cups of rolled oats. So if we're doubling our recipe, how many cups of rolled oats is that? Correct, four cups of rolled oats. Would I use a liquid measuring cup or a dry measuring cup? You got it, dry. So what I'll do is I'll tip this bag sideways a little bit and I'll reach my clean measuring cup into the bag and I will give it a shake and I'm gonna shake it so it's even. So I'll show you what I mean here. It needs to be nice and even so you don't have too much and you don't have too little. It almost looks like mine's a little bit shy. So I'm gonna scoop it back in and I'm really gonna make it even. Let's check, did I do better? Oh, that looks perfect. There's one cup and uh-oh, Miss Emily didn't realize that this measuring cup actually had a little water in it. Now look what happened. So when you're using dry measuring cups, make sure that they are dry. This is going to be our second scoop. Shake it and make it nice and even. Looks pretty good. Looks like it could be a little bit more in there, but this won't make or break the recipe if you don't have exact, exact amounts. But you do wanna be careful. And this is going to be our third cup of oats. Wow, this is a full blender. And our fourth cup of oats, and it looks to me like I have run out. But that's a good lesson to teach you. It looks like I only have about another half cup here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them anyways. I think it's going to be okay if the batter ends up too runny. I will find something else in my pantry to put in instead. But I'm going to see what happens with just a little bit shy of what the recipe called for. So I'll go ahead and turn my burner on and I'm going to use a cooking spray in the bottom of the pan, but you might have oil that you can put onto a little napkin and wipe through the pan before it's hot or whatever your family uses to grease the pan is fine. So I'm going to put that on low to medium heat and let that heat up. I never, ever, ever let this handle sit out here on the stove because guess what? If I were walking by, hmm, what do you think might happen? walking by oop, and I knocked the pan. If this were something really hot, that's a very dangerous situation. Always put your pan handle over the stove, but be careful not to put it over another burner because that also can be a hazard. That looks pretty good right there. So here's our pancake batter about ready to be mixed. If you don't have a blender at home, 
You don't have to blend this. You can mix it really well. It will just be a little bit more granular because of the oatmeal that doesn't get ground up. But I've made it before without the blender and it's perfect either way. All right, let's mix it up. All right, we're ready to cook. The best part about the blender is you can pour your batter right into the pan. So I'm going to make small pancakes and the batter looks perfect. Oops, those two might run together, but that's okay. Mm, they smell delicious. Okay, one more right over here. Go for a smaller one so it doesn't run together. All right, and I would like to add some blueberries to mine. So what we'll do now is we'll wait until we start to see some bubbles. All right, let's check. I'm starting to see a few more bubbles. If you look closely, you see those large bubbles that are forming? And I'm also noticing the edges are browning a bit. So first I test by putting the spatula under one of them and I see if it lifts up easily and I can even peek underneath and see what it looks like. And they look just about ready to flip. So I'll go ahead and I do a fast motion. I don't go slow. If I go slow, it's harder. So I do a fast motion right underneath it and then I just flick my wrist and turn it over. Wow, that looks good. So I do the same for the next one, fast, flip. And these two are connected. So what I'll do is I'll use my spatula to push them apart and then I will go again, fast, flip. And I'm always watching my hand near the stove as well. And the last one, I go under it fast. When I have to flip backwards here, Ooh. oh, and guess what? If it lands on top like that, don't move it right away. Let the rest of the pancake cook a little bit. We'll move it in a second. You have to have patience when cooking pancakes. Let's see if we can move that pancake now. So we'll tuck our spatula in and we'll just pull it off the top. See, no harm done. 